Hello oh guys, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to my eighth video. Today we're going to learn about optionals. Create a new project and let's get started. An optional is a type that can either hold a value or not. So it's possible for its content to be empty. It's also possible for the content to exist. Now in Swift, we use optionals whenever we're not sure that at the time of use, that variable actually has a value. I'm going to give examples. Whenever we want to create an optional, we use the question mark symbol. So if I wanted to create a variable with a variable called name, and I want this to be an optional, I'm going to specify the type and add a question mark in the end. So this means that it's possible for this particular variable to be empty at the time of call. So if I try to print this and I said name, you'd see again that this is an optional string, right? And if we print it, we're going to get nil right here. So if we add a name, so I say name equals Emmanuel, and I run this again, we're going to get optional Emmanuel. So it's telling us that this is an optional variable. Now, there are actually different ways of unwrapping an optional, and uh, I'm going to cover all of them individually. The first and probably the easiest way of unwrapping an optional is to use the force unwrap. And what that simply is, is uh, we're, we're just trying to unwrap irrespective of whether the value is empty or not. To force and wrap, we just use a symbol exclamation, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to unwrap this value and just print out the name here. So we're going to see Emmanuel, right? Because it has been unwrapped. But the downside to force and wrapping a variable or an optional is that you need to be sure that the value actually exists. Now, if for any reason the value is still nil and we try to unwrap this, we're going to get a crash, right? And the error message is going to be unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping optional. So you're probably going to see this a couple of times if you actually go with this approach, okay? So yeah, you need to be sure that there is a value whenever you want to use the force unwrap. The second method we could use is the conditional unwrapping. And what we do here is we check to see if the value of the optional is nil before we actually access it. So in a situation like this, before we actually print name or try to force unwrap, what we would do is we'd say, if name is not equal to nil, then we want to force unwrap. So at this point, we are sure that the name exists. Now, if we do this, it's not going to crash. It's not going to print anything because the value is nil. But if I remove this comment and now we have name, it's going to print Emmanuel right here. Now, another way we could do conditional unwrapping is to use something called if let. And what, what we need to do is just say if let name equals name. So what this is going to do is it's going to check the value of name and assign it to name if it exists. Now this can actually be a new variable, whatever you want to call it. We could call it new name, but it's just uh, uh, what I call a convention to just use the same name. It's just so that you don't have a lot of variables floating around. So I'll just go like this. So what we're saying here is if the name exists, then print name. And you notice that it actually complained when we're trying to force and wrap. The reason is because this name is no longer an optional. It must be there. So cannot force and wrap value of non-optional type string. This is no longer an optional. If we click here, we see that it's simply a string because we've unwrapped it. Okay. So if we do this, we're still going to get the same outcome. It's going to print in manual. And if I remove this, it's going to not print anything. Another way we could use the conditional unwrapping is to use the guard statement. 
To explain this, I'm going to create a function called greet. So func greet is going to take an argument called name as an optional string, and it's going to return a string this time. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is check and to make sure that the name actually exists. And using a guard statement, we do say guard let name equals name else we want to return something and what we're going to return is please enter your name okay now let me explain how this guard works the thing is it's going to check if name exists and if it does it's going to unwrap name into this variable which is going to become a string okay but if it does not exist, it's going to fall to this else block and then return print, sorry, please enter a name as a string. Now, if the name exists, we want to return welcome and the name of the person. Now, to test this function out, let's print greet and name. Now, what do you think this is going to do? Can you guess? Oh yeah, name, name. Can you guess what this is gonna do? It's gonna print, please enter your name, exactly. Because we do not have a name here. Let's comment this out so we don't confuse you. So name is actually nil, and it's printing, please enter your name. Now, if we pass in a name and we run the program again, it's going to say, welcome, Emmanuel. So that's how to use the guard statement. And the thing is, it needs to be inside a function because we are, we are using the return statement. So yeah, it needs to return out of a block. Now, another method we have is implicitly unwrapping optionals. And what that is, is to automatically unwrap optionals whenever we want to use them. To do that, we use a bang or an exclamation instead of a question mark. Now let's let's try it out. Name still is an optional, okay? So if we try to print out name, we're going to get nil because there is no name. But if we want to use name to do something else, let's say we want to add like my surname to it, acquire. And when I do this, it's going to crash because it's going to unwrap name automatically. And since it is nil, you can actually do anything with it. So it's, it's just like force and wrapping. You need to be sure that a value exists before you actually use it. So if I put a value in name and I run this again, it's going to work normally. Okay. So that's implicitly unwrapping optionals. Finally, and probably my most favorite method of unwrapping optionals is the optional chaining method. To do this, let's create a, a user struct. So we're just going to say struct user. I hope you remembered how to do this. Now let's create a variable called name as a string. Okay. We can make this a let as well. Anyways. Yeah. Now let's create an object of this user struct. To do that, we'd say let Emmanuel. And this time, let's just make this a type user as an optional. Now, if I try to print out the name of the user, Emmanuel.name. If I try to print this out, it's going to, it's not going to allow this because this is an optional. So let's force and wrap this. This is going to crash because it is nil. Why am I using let? So it's going to crash because this is nil. But whenever we want to access this name property of Emmanuel, depending on whether Emmanuel exists or not, we could simply just change this bang to an optional. So what this is going to do is it's going to first of all unwrap this to see if there is a value for Emmanuel. If there is a value, it will now get the name of that user if there is no value, it just would return nil, right? Let's try this and see. So you see it returned nil right here. Now, we actually created a user object and we passed in a name as Emmanuel. We would see that it's going to print optional Emmanuel 
as a name okay then something else I like to do is since this is an optional it's possible for it to return nil so I'll just say question mark question mark and give it a default value so let's say our default name is guest now if I do this and I run this it's going to also unwrap this and return Emmanuel or if this is simply nil it's going to return guest awesome so that's how um, optional chaining works you just access optional values using the question mark and then you get more and more objects like that okay so if you have any questions or confusions, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video.